And with that, let's now shift focus over to Hawaii. The wildfires are ripping through Maui in Hawaii, having killed at least 55 people. The historic town of Lahaina has been razed down and fires have caused extensive damage that is likely to take years and even cost billions of dollars to repair. The Maui police chief has said that the death toll is expected to rise further from 55 and has also urged residents to refrain from returning to Lahena until the deceased are recovered. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has declared a major disaster in Hawaii on Thursday and ordered federal aid to areas affected by the wildfires. Hawaii authorities have also announced a price freeze on all commodities on the island of Maui mandating that essential items including food, water, gasoline and cooking fuel be sold at pre-emergency price levels. Once a county that boasted of touristic glory, the message from locals and natives to anyone planning to go on a vacation in Maui has become loud and clear this week. Now is not the time to visit Maui. The next few days, however, remain critical to analyze the destruction that the wildfires have caused the area. Here are some reports. Wildfires scorching Hawaii's Maui and Big Islands have killed dozens of people, left behind smoldering ruins and forced thousands of residents and tourists to flee. On Friday, the state's governor called it the worst natural disaster to ever hit Hawaii. But how did these fires become so devastating? The cause of the blazes was still not clear days after they began. The fires have hit large parts of Lahaina, a beach resort city of about 13,000 people on northwestern Maui, especially hard. It sits in the relative middle of the eight main islands that make up Hawaii's archipelago. What experts do know is that conditions were ripe for wildfires there before they sparked off on Tuesday. Maui was in a, a, a D1, D2 severe drought for the season. And the risk for large fire potential was higher there than it was in California. For That's San Jose State University meteorology professor Craig Clements. The National Weather Service had also issued warnings for the Hawaiian Islands for high winds and dry weather. Add to that the unusually high temperatures this summer, in part due to climate change, in part due to the El Nino warming event. So. These, all line, these conditions all lined up with kind of a classic fire weather situation. It just so happened that there was ignition during the high wind event, allowing a very fast spreading fire to burn into the community towards the coast. U.S. weather officials say winds from Hurricane Dora have fanned the flames across the U.S. state coming from hundreds of miles southwest of the Hawaiian Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Separately, a low pressure system to the west near Japan has also contributed to sustained high winds. These all become a serious problem when they reach Maui's very steep mountain range. The winds were coming from the northeast and they were very strong winds. They were descending, going up and over the mountain range and descending what we call the lee side. And as when that happens, you get acceleration near the surface. And so you get actually faster winds on the downslope side or the lee side of a mountain range. Dry vegetation is also a contributing factor. Here's Oregon State University professor Erica Fleischman. She's also the director of the Oregon Climate Change Research Institute. You can think of it as plants being thirstier, so plants use more water when the air temperature is higher. So the water that is present um, tends to disappear more rapidly. Fueling that problem, the spread of flammable non-native grasses brought in from around the world in areas of former farmland and forest. That's created large amounts of small, easily ignited materials that increase the risk and severity of fire. But what about the next big fire? Hawaiian officials say it will take several years and billions of dollars to rebuild the damage wrought by these fires. But scientists say human-caused climate change, driven by fossil fuel use, is increasing the frequency and intensity of such extreme weather events. Fleischmann, the Oregon State professor, says there are ways to limit the risks to homes and buildings, though it's not always easy or cheap. So many structures ignite because sparks moving far in front of the fire front 
are get into the ventilation system of the building. And there are ways to construct buildings so that the ventilation systems, um, it, it's less easy for the ventilation systems to take up sparks. You can have fire resistant roofs. You can be doing different things with decks, with materials next to structures. So, I mean, there are possibilities for saying a wildfire is likely to happen in the future, but perhaps buildings don't burn down. Perhaps people can protect themselves better from smoke or have better um, alert networks, evacuation networks. I mean, all kinds of systems to say, if, if we accept as a society that these events will happen again, how can we best protect ourselves and the things we care about from those events? Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. Oh my gosh. It's Hawaii's worst natural disaster in history, according to officials, who say Maui's wildfires unleashed destruction that will take many years and billions of dollars to rebuild. The resort town of Lahaina was once the capital of the Hawaiian kingdom, drawing 80 percent of the island's visitors every year. Much of it has now been reduced to smoldering ruins, according to Governor Josh Green. The fast-moving inferno killed more than 50 people, a toll expected to rise, turned thousands homeless, and destroyed as many as a thousand buildings. This tourist from California was on vacation with his wife and five children as the fire approached. They were forced to jump into the sea after escaping their rental car in Lahaina. Everything we were out there floating, and this is so surreal. And everything was burning around, explosions, cars blowing up, like embers flying. Just, just we couldn't breathe. We wouldn't, no, just, just, we couldn't breathe. There's no air. It's just the like carbon monoxide, and, and we held on as best as we could. My 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 wife, my kids, my older ones helped with the younger ones, and. We, Try to stick out the ground. The waves was trying to take us out to the ocean. We had to come back. Many more people suffered burns, smoke inhalation, and other injuries. The inferno that ravaged Lahaina was one of three major wildfires on Maui, all of them still burning. Fueled by dry conditions, a buildup of fuel, and 60 miles per hour gusts of wind. The fate of some of Lahaina's cultural treasures remains unclear. The historic 60-foot-tall banyan tree marking the spot where a 19th-century palace stood is still standing, though some of its boughs appeared charred. As wildfires scorched their way through Hawaii's Maui Island this week, killing dozens and forcing thousands to flee, some wondered whether artificial intelligence could have helped minimize the damage. In California, firefighters are experimenting with AI to see if it can do just that. Setting up more than 1,000 cameras across the state that feed images into a machine that alerts first responders about when to mobilize. Suzanne Leininger is an intelligence specialist at Cal Fire. So our mission is to keep all wildland fires uh, 10 acres or less. So these these AI cameras will help us get out there faster to, to keep up with that mission. The Alert California pilot program began last month, but has already started to show results. A camera spotted a fire that broke out at 3 a.m. in the remote Cleveland National Forest about 50 miles east of San Diego. In the dark, it could have spread into a raging wildfire, but the AI-powered program alerted a fire captain who called in crews that put it out in 45 minutes. If a detection is automatically happening, then that's, the, that's what can be really helpful to us because it's basically patrolling 24-7. Leininger says the technology could one day serve as a model for other states and countries. I think it's 100 percent applicable throughout anywhere in the world, especially now that we're experiencing a lot larger and more frequent uh, fire regimes. And with climate change, it's coming everywhere. The AI system was designed by engineers at the University of California, San Diego, using AI from Digital Path, a company based in Chico, California.